Here we are again, Matt, in Topic Town. Yeah, it's good to be here. It is good to be here, except we're not in the same place. We're still in town, in the Topic Town. Yeah, it's but slightly different location. New within. set! Yeah. Hooray! It's beautiful. Hip, hip, hooray! That's where the intro happens. Oh, okay. Okay, Greg. So, um, uh, well, first I want to say we, we've been... Here on this good stuff channel, we channel sure. we've been we've been very busy. We haven't mm -hmm. we haven't seen you guys in a while. We're gonna try to change that. We we'll miss you. We've actually built this this little set here for the good stuff, and it just so happens to work for Topic Town as well. Yeah. So uh, orange desk, mm -hmm. blue green background. Yeah. And if this uh, is gonna go up on the podcast on iTunes, you have no idea what we're talking about. But that's okay. Well, you can imagine it. You know, mm -hmm. imagine a, a green wall. Mm -hmm. And an orange desk or go and two to a, guys with beards sitting at it. Or try to go find two guys with beards and a place with a green wall and sit there. Yeah, they could reconstruct it. Yeah. In their own living room. Yeah, go ahead. You it's, know, we should have, like, we should put, like, instructions on how to construct the Top of Town set mm -hmm. um, in people's own living rooms so that they can experience, like, it, like it's a live show. Are you going to do that? Or am I going to? Uh, well, you know, Sam, you want to do that? Yeah, we, we should get Sam to do that. He's, I think he's on headphones right now, but... We'll just pretend he's going to do I'll, it. I'll send him an action item. Okay, good idea. On that. All right, what are we talking about today, Matt? So, I want to ask you, Craig. Don't hit the table so hard. Drive, driverless cars. Okay. <laughs> um, the best idea humanity has ever had or greatest idea humanity has ever had? Well, uh, first I have to decide, <laughs> I have to decide the, the meaning of best <laughs> and greatest. I mean, greatest could mean biggest. Uh, best is more of a qualitative statement. Uh, I would say greatest idea humanity okay. has ever had. So that's biggest and not, best. Maybe not the best idea, but it oh. is the greatest. Okay, okay. <laughs> I personally, am, to me, driverless cars is a very exciting thing. I'm all on board for it. Literally. On board. Like, you know. Like in a car. Like in that a, drives itself. Yeah. Uh, it... I mean, I can see there's a lot of draw. There's possible drawbacks mm -hmm. with ever, just like every new technology. Yeah. You know, it's going to gr drastically change the job landscape. I'm sure, and in, in, in at, at first, probably a bad way. Yeah, I think they describe it as a disruptive uh, technology. Disruptive technology isn't that's probably most technologies. I would think. Yeah, uh, I but, mean, but all but technology like, is going to change the mm -hmm. world. Problem is, if we introduce driverless cars quickly, it'll probably be bad at first. I think it would be real uh, bad for for a lot of people who who drive buses and taxis and trucks just hauling stuff. Uh, it'll it'll change things drastically, mm -hmm. and we'll have to figure that out. I'm yeah. optimistic about it, but yeah, I am too. Because number one, I don't like driving. I hate. I it. don't understand why people like. There's people out there who like to drive. They're mm -hmm. like they drive around for fun. Mm -hmm. Not not me. I uh, driving is a chore. We're in a band together, and um, we've driven across this con this great country of ours mm -hmm. many times, and often, uh, usually six to nine hours between shows yeah. between cities. Sometimes get, twelve hours. Yeah, you get a lot of driving time in. You get a lot of driving time. I've spent a lot of time sitting silently next to you. Yeah, sit yeah. dead silence. I know. <laughs> we should try that in one episode of Topic Town. Just uh, silent, just silently, silent. like what we're gonna reenact our uh, being on tour, like where I'm driving. Yeah, we'll do it for re in real time as well. So yeah. like we'll say like uh, Chicago to Minneapolis, the drive. We'll mm -hmm. just reenact the whole thing. Like we'll six try to, and a half hours. We might we might have to have a Google map up that that follows Showing along, our, our so you know progress. how to turn. But yeah, it's a great idea. Like every like every like after three yeah. hours, we actually get out of the car to get that's, gas. That's or right. <laughs> uh, but the thing about driverless cars is. You could ju we could just be sleeping, and I would probably be. I, I can't sleep in a car, but it's mostly because I'm terrified of the other person driving. Yeah. Uh, but if it, it's but a driverless if it was a car, machine, as, a, a as, cold calculating machine, you'd, yeah, you'd be. I'd be sleeping like a baby. I I would. I mean, maybe not at first. We have got to perfect <laughs> the technology. But as I understand it, and and as I would think, I would think the roads would be much safer. Well, uh, that's that's the that's what's predicted because. Uh, yeah. Well, as you know, um, in an upcoming episode, we uh, we have an interview with the, this professor Dan oh, yeah. Simons. For the good stuff, we uh, one of our playlists we're working on. We're working on four all at the same time right mm -hmm. now. Hopefully, those come out start coming out in the next month or two. Mm -hmm. uh, but the 
second, I think it'll probably be the second one, is all about robots. Yeah. Uh, and we wanted to talk about driverless cars in that playlist, mm-hmm. but uh, we just... It, we had we, trouble getting... I wanted to get in a driverless car, yeah. but we had trouble uh, making it Just didn't happen. didn't happen. So we're yeah. going to be talking about driverless cars. Yeah. So it'll this. be a lot more boring. Yeah. No, just, <laughs> yeah. uh, it's going to be wonderful. But... Uh, yeah, so we just decided to talk about driverless cars in this this video in a very, um, you know, tangent tangential way. Yeah, uh, you we know, go just, off on we're tangents. Like, we're just kind of we're talking it out. We're just yeah, just talking it out. <laughs> uh, that's what we do here at Topic Town. But oh. um, a different playlist than the robot one. We interviewed Dan Simons, who's a professor of uh, visual cognition, and like he or mm-hmm. I can't remember his exact, exact study, but he's like yeah. studies um, change blindness and. And flaws in our perception, and things like yeah, that. Yeah, that's and for one thing, a one, separate playlist. Seeing isn't believing. That yeah, we're doing. but he talked yeah. about um, driving and like how our visual system evolved. Uh, basically, didn't evolve for uh, use at high speeds. Like we're not yeah. real. We're not good drivers. <laughs> no right. humans are built to drive. It's because we're not able to like pay attention at high speeds like that. Like we just can't react fast enough. We can't mm-hmm. can't notice things. I mean, I've had many. Actually, today I drove back this morning from Indianapolis. Uh, this was this isn't really necessarily about change blindness, but it but it is about uh, bad driving. Uh, and uh, <laughs> I it was I, it was a three and a half hour drive. I'm the, I was getting into Chicago. I was in the in the fast lane. I was going you know average too fast. I was I don't think yeah, I was 10, speeding. 15 miles per hour. Yeah. Over. 20, 30 miles yeah, that's over. That's like that's that's yeah. the the Chicago speed right. limit. Yeah, I wasn't going. I don't think I was speeding, but I was going faster than cars in the lane to the right of me. And but then at one point, this this car like zoomed up next to me as I was going, and then just started changing lanes, just changing as if no one was there, just and never stopped. I had to slam on my brakes, and they changed lanes and went right in front of me. Yeah, and that's um, I'm sure that person probably didn't notice you mm-hmm. you know because people just aren't good at noticing things people are bad drivers I think, there's I think, no people just bad at driving i think the worst scenario i think the thing that terrifies me most especially in a busy city like chicago is uh when you're changing lanes and there's another car two lanes over that i'm always trying to make sure that guy's not changing lanes at the same time as me. oh right? yeah yeah that, so that, like, I, that like... happens almost all that happens very often where i'm changing and then i see someone else start to change and either they go back or i go back but yeah there's like a visual communication going on going on yeah it, well yeah. there's uh there's something that like the driverless cars like how they'll work supposedly like they can be able to be able to communicate with like the other driverless cars or be able to you know mm-hmm. calculate things so like that stuff won't happen they'll yeah. be able to like you know, take turns or like let let all the other cars know what they're doing. They'll have eyes all around the car. Yeah, yeah. It's and, not just and communication. Like they can communicate. The way we communicate with other cars is by honking. One <laughs> one thing, one gesture, beep. Well, well there's other gestures in, that you can make, but you know, it's not guaranteed others are going to see you. <laughs> yeah, uh, and uh, I think that's one of the things that I really dislike about driving is that there's a sort of this. Uh, like stunted forms of communication like you can't really you can't say you're sorry when you're driving that's like one of the things mm. i always wish i could say sorry somehow <laughs> you know or but there's, there's just like there, you like i think that's why people get mad when they're driving there's a road rage because well you i can't, you can't like you can't communicate to other people any in, in, in any other way than honking or like mm-hmm. in a sort of negative way i definitely had things i wanted to say to that woman this morning <laughs> i seriously I, I actually went through that thought process like uh she she was swerving and just missed me, and I'm like, oh! And then I started thinking, I want to pull up next to her and start yelling. I just want to yell at, at, at her to make, to know, just let her know what she did, because she didn't even think she even knew. Yeah. And uh, and then I thought, okay, this is road rage. Oh, I'm experiencing road rage right now. I, and the reason is because it's, I can't express to her how I feel. I really want to. It's because you were driving. I could honk, but at this point, she was already further ahead. And it, what would that have done? Anyway, yeah, she would just been like, "Why is that guy honking at me?" <laughs> yeah. So, so Pretty driverless sure. cars, they would we would avoid that that mm-hmm. problem. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I think the one problem would be when there's driverless cars and human drivers yeah. on the road at the same time. That might be that is a problem. Yeah. And, uh, and it's I think something, and we'll, we'll get to this a little bit, but like I think it's something like Google um, seems to uh, not talk about very much. <laughs> so Google. Uh, Announced that it was going to deploy its own driverless taxi system. Mm-hmm. 
Um, and Google is in is a big investor in Uber. In Uber, well, so it, the story is actually a little different. As far as I can tell, it Google isn't going to is it hasn't announced a driverless taxi system. What they have mm-hmm. what they have is they made an app for they made their own app for like uh, like a car service, but it's like I guess it's an internal app for like Google employees. Mm-hmm. Um, it's and it's not necessarily a comp- in competition with Uber. But it, it's it's vague what they're actually doing, and they, they, they could. I mean, they're, they're Google. They can do whatever they want. They could mm-hmm. be, uh, making their a, a comp, you know, a, a competitor to Uber. But mm-hmm. Uber is definitely trying to do a driverless taxi system. They're working with Carnegie Mellon. We went to Carnegie Mellon and talked mm-hmm. to a lot of the uh, robot experts there. Um, but they're they're working to get a, a functional autonomous taxi system within two to five years. That's what they say. Yeah. I also got the impression, though, from people at Carnegie Mellon that uh, I also burped. That was, we don't edit this. We try not to edit it as much as possible, so we're leaving that burp in. Yeah, uh, that's, that, that's real. That was an autonomous burp. Uh, the impression I got was that from some people at Carnegie Mellon University that the uh, the car, driverless cars, it's way it's much lo- a longer way off. I mean, driving maybe driving on the highway could be ha- could happen soon, but yeah. within a city. Uh, might be, it might have to be more of a gradual uh, shift because there's so much, so many variables in a city. Yeah, uh, you have to deal with people. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, uh, but on the other hand, uh, Ryan, our colleague from the good stuff, mm-hmm. uh, Mr. Ryan Wolf. Yeah, he he, I don't know if he read this or he just posited this his own theory, but or may, uh, with regard to what Google's doing, they seem to be trying to push the envelope and get fully autonomous cars out there quickly um in the in the uh you know taxi service realm and it would be more to their benefit to just do it all at once rather than a gradual shift because if they they're google they can do what they want mm-hmm. so it might be likely that in, we could go from like kind of a few elements of ai in a car and then suddenly boom fully autonomous that'd be awesome yeah. um it seems pretty ambitious yeah um, uh like I, on, the, on these notes here, I've got this like sort of um, timeline of of predictions of what how how the autonomous car is going to come about. Like, mm-hmm. so like the highway stuff seems to be like getting an autonomous car to drive on the highway. That seems to be like uh, coming soon. Like, mm-hmm. um, like so the, this is one prediction by summer two thousand fifteen. This summer, mm-hmm. um, Tesla will be have it's supposedly going to have a. a a car that can drive fully autonomously on highways without the driver having to touch the steering wheel, brakes, or gas pedals. Uh, so that's really fast. That and then, and, awesome. and then, basically, in the next couple of years, like there's a bunch of different like Mercedes. So this and, summer they're gonna have that. That's what it said. Um, that's what they're trying wow. for. We'll see if that actually comes through. But like then, highway, highway autonomous cars, it will seem to be in the next you know year. Like they, they should be, they should be showing up Jeez. according to these predictions. Yeah, um, but then there's other issues though, like laws uh, have to be changed, and there's also the whole thing about insurance companies. Yeah, uh, um, there is, there is, uh, where is that? Um, this is the portion where we scroll our notes. While there I was coffee. Oh, okay. So by early 2017, the U.S. Department of Transportation hopes to publish a rule mandating vehicle to vehicle vehicle communication. Mm-hmm. As like as like to standardize that, so they it seems like um, the there is like they're moving toward there is like laws uh, moving forward to allow this to happen. Mm-hmm. So do you think five years it'll be fully autonomous cars on the road? No, I mean I think I, I because of like what um, we heard at Carnegie Mellon and there's another guy on here. Uh, uh, where is it? Matt, so, you were really good at scrolling, I must yeah. say. So, uh, this guy from Carnegie Mellon, another guy, uh, Raj Raj Kumar, mm-hmm. um, who's the director of the autonomous driving research at Carnegie Mellon, mm-hmm. he said driverless cars would not be available anytime soon, mm-hmm. and that Detroit car makers believe the prospect of a fully self driving car arriving anytime soon is pure science fiction. <laughs> well, but that's kind of vague terms. Anytime soon. Uh, I mean, I think that that seems pretty. Uh, are they saying down, not not into the two to five year range? I yeah, think. but they but they're not they're not saying it's impossible. 
No, so, I mean, they're not saying it's impossible. I don't think it's just, impossible. Yeah. But uh, it seems to be that maybe Google Here, is a little bit too optimistic. Well, here's what I think. I think I think we, we could have fully autonomous cars on a limit, limited scale, like lo- limited locations, mm-hmm. maybe. Uh, but to just have a car that you could hop in and say, take me to Orlando. Take me to take me to L.A. or whatever. Uh I don't think that that might be a long way off. It might be it might be very localized autonomous cars yeah. in five years, but but someday I hope that we have some I, someday when I'm say eighty, I want to be I want to be able to just basically live in a giant autonomous vehicle that just roams the the planet, and I just it's just one constant party. Just hey guys, come into my my vehicle. No one's driving. Let's just let's just sit down. Let's have a beer. Let's, yeah. Let's let's dance. Yeah. Let's. Um, uh, we can do anything you want, really. Well, it's, it's, well you know, as long within as you have the space within legal limits. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but in in this timeline here of mm-hmm. predictions, like, um, so well, one thing Google th- says that they're going to have the, all the problems worked out by twenty twenty. Uh, so that's like all uh, the problems. Yeah. Wow. Uh, so that seems pretty optimistic. But by two thousand thirty five. There's a report that says uh, that'll be the year the most that most self-driving vehicles will be operated completely independent from a, a human occupant's control. 2035, which is interesting because that's also the year that the singularity might happen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, according to certain certain estimation, well, based yeah. on like things like Moore's law stuff, we'll get into for the robots that, playlist. Wasn't that Kurt, Kurzweil's um, uh, uh, prediction that the singularity would happen in yeah. 2035? Yeah, that's true. If, but a lot of people dispute that. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, it seems everyone seems to say around 2035, 2040, uh, robots are going to become you know self aware and take over the world. Yeah, it'll basically. be like well, not be, quite. That. Be, it's judgment day. They're not necessarily basically. saying that. I mean, they're <laughs> saying that computational power. Some people are saying that computational power will mimic the human brain. Yeah, or be as smart as the human brain. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure I'm saying yeah. that correctly, but but uh, something Some, like that. Yeah, something something crazy. And will uh, yeah. Uh, that's what we'll, we're going to talk about that in the robots playlist. Yeah. But in the meantime, I'm all for continuing to improve driverless cars. I don't. I think maybe in my lifetime it'll be the road will be fully will just be autonomous cars. But maybe it's kind of good news that we. Well, we think it's going to happen slower. It's good news for you know jobs. I mean, jobs yeah. will only gradually go away instead of suddenly going yeah. away. Yeah, it won't be uh, as disruptive. But one thing I wonder is if the driverless car initiative that Google's doing is isn't maybe um the wrong way of going about it like why why aren't th- why aren't these being implemented in like buses or public transportation which seems like a like it would be a simpler thing a simpler problem because buses have 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 r- you know very specific routes, routes. And yeah but they still have to deal with other cars and they do I, I would say like, or trains for instance I don't know, I would, know like like a train would, has it on track like I would say highway like, travel would be easier to implement than than any kind of city travel sure but you could have like a, a train which is on a track be autonomously controlled why isn't why aren't they working on that that seems like that would be a, a simple well we solution. should have trains i mean vancouver i think I, I remember i remember hearing that vancouver their trains they don't have drivers uh and there's probably other places uh that don't have trains don't have drivers the train at, at o'hare airport doesn't have a driver sure uh, at plenty of airports uh i yeah but we should we should be working on that we should we definitely should do that, but then like again, like, then that's, then a, that's lower, a jobs issue as well. That is, uh, um, but I, I mean, I would imagine that you could still you'd still need like something like a you know an operator to make mm-hmm. sure that the, you know the bus is 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 working correctly. So you yeah. have like it's, it's like more of like a custodian on the on the bus. <laughs> sure. Um, and and maybe to make sure that you know people aren't on the bus are behaving. You yeah, know, it's more of like a. Uh, Policeman. Yeah, kind of a policeman. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> security. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I think we've covered this topic for now. We can yeah. come back to it. What do you think about driverless cars? Yeah, uh, best idea in human history or, or greatest. greatest. Yeah, and um, we also, uh, my previous, the previous video I did on this channel mentioned Patreon. We now have a Patreon page, mm-hmm. uh, patreon.com slash the good stuff if you'd like to support us. I know we haven't put out a playlist in quite a while, but it's coming. And yeah. It's going to be good. We've been working it, hard. They're going to come out before driverless cars. Do yeah, <laughs> I hope. I really hope. Yeah, uh, and a little luck. Yeah, I think uh, that's all for now. Yeah. So thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Yep. Bye. Bye.